everyone. I know we haven't been doing lives too many lately. We have actually been investing all of our time into our Cracking the NDIS Code participants. We have delivered our modules over the last five weeks. We've just had our last bonus go out on the Thursday. It was been sensational being able to be interactive with the community. Um, the purpose of Amour and Care and the reason why I'm so passionate about this and why we started this is because I've seen a huge gap in the disability sector where people that are in the NDIA and then we've got the providers and we've got the participants, they're actually not communicating very well and the scheme is not being implemented properly. So from working up in the agency to then becoming a provider and working really closely with participants and having a lot of um, family and friends that are also partaking in the scheme, it's become really close to my heart to make sure that there is enough knowledge um, and enough accessibility out there for everyone to be able to understand and implement the scheme properly. Uh, this is why Amour and Care is now something that um, I'm really passionate about. And I want to bring back um, our community and I want to make sure that you guys feel really supported and that we're answering any and all of the questions that you have. So I will be doing a live every day for the next 10 days. If you have any questions, if you want to jump in, um, if you want to DM me some of your questions, I will be answering them. Otherwise, every day, I'm just going to talk about a topic. So if you've got anything of interest that you'd like me to say, um, just let me know. Uh, so that's my commitment to you. I know that um, we started off strong, posting a lot of things, but then we made a huge commitment to the NDIS Crack in the Code class, which if you haven't seen, um, or if you didn't get an opportunity to join us online and watch the class, make sure that you tune up this time, follow us, subscribe, because we will be doing three amazing classes. Uh, in the last week, I've been very fortunate to be able to fly to Melbourne and attend the International Childhood Trauma Conference. It was incredible. There were so many amazing presenters there talking about the impact of trauma um, in our daily lives. It was, uh, there was a lot of talk about um, what we can do in, in our in education department and schools. Uh, to help with early intervention, which the NDIS is really big on. But some of the takeaway points that we had were that stuck with me that I'd like to share with you today was um, how not always uh, people with psychosocial disabilities, so mental health, sometimes they're um, misdiagnosed, sometimes they're di they can be diagnosed with schizophrenia or borderline personality disorder, um, just because the practitioner is not very trauma informed, because trauma is quite serious, so there's a lot. Um, there are a lot of symptoms that can be caused due to trauma that actually people misdiagnose as psychosocial disability. And psychosocial disability is one of the most funded disabilities in the NDIS world. So I'm very passionate about helping providers to become trauma-informed. A lot of participants have dealt with a lot of um, grief and loss, a lot of families as well, um, especially people that have an acquired disability later on in life um, or families who have a child who recently becomes diagnosed. So it can be quite confronting. It's really important that everyone dealing in that sector is trauma informed. Other things that we learned was the difference between um, reward and reward or punishment influence. So this is a really interesting class. And he said, you know, um, this is a, a presenter called Kevin Creedon. So he works with forensic uh, psychotherapy and trauma informed so anyone that's committed a crime sometimes has heavily sexualized behavior which we do see a lot in um, 
some of the participants. So he did a little experiment with the audience and he said, what would, how many people would put your hand up if I offered you a million dollars to go downstairs right now and play a Beethoven symphony and the piano? And no one put their hand up. There was a class of maybe 200 people. And then he said, okay, what about if I made a five million dollars and still no one put their hand up? So he goes, okay, last bet, ten million dollars for you to go downstairs and play the Beethoven symphony on the piano. And no one put their hand up. So then he said, well, you're not a um, rewards enthused class, are you? You're not very led by reward. So he goes, let's try punishment. So then he stood one guy up from the audience and he said, what would you say if I said either you go downstairs and play Beethoven symphony or I will cut your hand off? And the guy said, you know, unfortunately I wouldn't be able to. So he again, he looked at the lady next to him and he said, what about you? What well, now this gentleman has one hand and another one is bleeding. And I'm telling you, if you don't go downstairs right now and you play the Beethoven um, symphony on the piano, I'm going to cut off both of your hands. And this lady is just looking at him kind of like, oh, what did you expect me to do? And he said, you would go downstairs and you would pray to God that somehow you'd learn to play the symphony in the next couple of minutes. So the, the purpose of that experiment was to show that regardless if we're using punishment or reward, if the person in front of you doesn't have the capacity, doesn't have the tools to be performing the task at hand, it doesn't matter how much reward and it doesn't matter how much punishment we put in front of them that they're not going to be able to do the task why that's very important why i thought it was really good to share with you guys is because sometimes when we're dealing with participants a lot of providers don't have the insight into the capacity of that individual or where that person has been taught to achieve so what tools has that person been given there is no point of us um wanting to uh, put a lot of goals that seem unachievable for someone that doesn't have the right tools to achieve that goal. So NDIS is very new and right now access and the whole capacity building method is quite new. So a lot of participants who are in the middle age um, who are finally being able to have a chance to exercise choice and control. They've never exercised choice and control before. This is so new to them. So for them to be able to be given all of this freedom without some supported decision making, sometimes it actually can impact on their life and the things that they can achieve. So these are things that you really need to take into consideration. What is the capacity of the participant? What is the capacity of the person that you are helping? Can they actually, in fact, understand and be making that under and that decision? And when you're reading things like your service agreement or you're explaining something to them, are they actually understanding? Are you giving them information in a way that they can re receive it? This is so important. Everybody receives information differently, whether you have a disability or not. So you need to ensure that all of your documents, your presentation, your service agreement is in a friendly language that people can understand regardless of their disability. Sometimes when I meet providers, they give me like a contract of like 36 pages or a very lengthy service agreement. If you're dealing with a participant, that needs to be friendly to the participant. So if, um, if they're not understanding what service you're providing, how much you're charging, if you're charging for travel or not, what does that mean to them? You need to sit down. It's part of your responsibility to sit down with them and explain exactly what that means. They need to feel secure and they need to feel confident in the service that you're providing. So that's a big tip. Um, another thing that I wanted to say was I felt that the conference, the um, Childhood Trauma Conference, was an international one and it was, again, amazing. We've had some of the best speakers in our generation and we have advanced a lot in the trauma sector, so it was amazing to see. But sadly, the whole five days, over 3,000 people, and it wasn't accessible. There was no one there 
uh, you doing Ausland or any kind of sign or translating and I know that it was live so we couldn't have the subtitles and I hope that they're going to make it a little bit more accessible for the people that um, take it home and it was a very expensive conference as well it was definitely worth every cent I just think that the feedback that I'm going to give is that needs to be a little bit more accessible. So that's something for you as a provider as well to consider. Is your service accessible? Have you thought about that? Because we are welcoming a world of accessibility where anyone's welcome. So if, um, if you were a blind participant or if you were a participant in a wheelchair or a deaf participant, would you be able to access your own services? Always put yourself in the participant's shoes before delivering a service, before writing up a service agreement or a contract. It's so important that you think about who you are servicing. If you are someone who is spreading out to all the disabilities, then make sure that you know all the disabilities, that you are not just advertising an NDIS friendly service, but you're not actually NDIS friendly. It's... Um, it's actually really sad how many people have no idea about access and what that means. So very lucky to be in this amazing country that's taking a step into leading the way, into making everything accessible. So you want to be one of them. Um, like I said in the beginning of this life, I'm making a commitment to you to put everything that we have into a more care, to lead the way into making this a very accessible, interactive platform. I know that we don't have subtitles right now because this is a live. So if you do have any access requirements, just let us know how we can be more accessible to you. If you enjoyed what I spoke about with the service agreements, if that's something that you want to dig a little bit deeper into, if you have any questions about anything NDIS related, uh, if you are a provider or a director and you want to expand and excel in your NDIS business, this is what we're here for because we believe that by helping you, we will be helping participants to achieve their goals. It's so important that you know the difference between just having a big goal and an NDIS plan to ensure there's heaps of funding and having a goal that's actually meaningful for your participant. Most participants will tell you that they have no idea what the NDIS goal is. And what good is that? What accountability then do they have to putting in as much as they can to be successful? If you're in this business to make an easy money, then you're in the wrong business. This business is for people that actually care, people that have a passion for social justice, people that want to make with people with disabilities succeed and have a full accessible chance at having everything that they want in life they deserve it and we have to fight for that unfortunately still but if you are here it means that you are leading the way so i hope that you join me in doing that i hope that every day we can give you a little bit more more tips or anything that we can do to help you to succeed there's plenty of work out there for everyone and we want to do this together we want to move forward being collaboratively and succeeding together. So, um, yes, I really hope that you enjoyed this life. Like I said, we'll be here for the next 10 days. We have some very exciting news coming up. If you have any questions, if you want to join me on the live, feel free. I would love to have a buddy to chat with. <laughs> I'm very new to this whole online platform things so you have to excuse me for not being too well prepared um but i will talk a little bit about why i got into this business and what my background is and what i do now to help participants um tomorrow so if there's anything you want me to add to that please let me know and i will see you there lots of love and care for you